the holy entered church that day. The holy entered the church that day. The Holy One of God, whose touch can heal the broken places of life, entered the church that day. The Holy One of God, whose spirit of peace can quiet our spirits, can quiet our confusion, can quiet our despair, entered church that day. The Holy One of God, whose mercy and forgiveness touches hurt and broken places deep inside us, enter church that day. And so, Holy One of God, we invite you to enter church with us wherever we are, whether we are in a sanctuary, whether we are in a car, whether we are at work or at home. Holy One of God, enter into our presence. Touch our broken pot spots. Quiet our restless spirits. Place your mercy in our souls. We continue our journey with the Holy through the Gospel of Mark. And today we're at the story from Mark 1, 21 through 28. They went into Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding regions of Galilee. A homeless man came into church that day. He was a little rough around the edges, a full beard and shaggy hair, a bag that he wouldn't let go of. A homeless man came into church that day and there were looks, wondering if they were safe, wondering if they could move because the smell, wondering. A homeless man came into church that day and some of them wanted to fix the problem, wanted to give him money, wanted to find him shelter, wanted to place him where they needed him to be. A homeless man came into church that day. A young man came into church that day. A young man came into church that day and he had a backpack and was carrying a stick and he kept reaching into his backpack and into his pockets and everyone was worried. I was worried. A young man came into church that day and 
we were fearful because we didn't know what it was. Because he wanted to do things we didn't do. He wanted to speak to us about God. He wanted to take and sermonize to us. Oh, a young man came into church that day and scared us. We're on alert. People were worrying about whether he was going to be one of those who pulled a gun out of that backpack and decided to shoot us up. And then after church, as he spoke, as he told us those stories, as we heard that God spoke to him all the time and God had a mission for him and God was choosing for him to do stuff, as he spoke and we were clear that he had some sort of mental illness, we went into fix-it mode, right? We wanted to find him the right spot. We wanted to contact the right people. We wanted to make him better so that we could feel better, so that we could feel less guilt. Jesus walked into church that day. Jesus walked into church and he started to share what the scripture said. He started to speak, and the people were astounded by what he was saying because Jesus had walked into church that day. The Holy One of God had walked into church that day and began speaking in ways that they had not heard before about the scriptures in ways that they had not heard before. The Holy One of God, Jesus, walked into church that day, and they were astonished. They didn't know how to place him in the categories they had for what rabbis did. They didn't know how to place him in the categories they had for what religious folk did. They didn't know what to do with him, and they were astonished and said he spoke with authority. And you wondered what words they used there. Were they amazement? Were they derision, like... He spoke with authority. Really? Him? The Holy One of God walked into church that day. And the homeless man and the young man said, What do you have to do with us? What do you have to do with us? What do you have to do with us? Do you want to destroy us? And Jesus, looked at that man, that man that the people in church had let in, that man the people in church had let in who was full, they described of evil. That man who was full of evil that they had let into their church, Jesus looked at that man and said, be quiet, and pulled that evil out of him, pulled that evil out of him. Jesus changed that man's life that day. What do you have to do with us, Jesus? What do you have to do with us? When we are lost in anxiety and our fears are overwhelming us, can we even ask that question? Can we even begin to think about faith, about God, about comfort, about grace and hope? Can we experience the Holy One of God? When we are lost and trapped in our anxiety and fear, when we have demons running around our head and we have a hard time seeing that there's anyone who could help us, that anyone can change what is going on in our head, the fear, the fear that we have can anyone speak to it? Can anyone calm it? Can anyone destroy it? Can anyone cast out the evil in our midst? 
Jesus speaks to the unclean spirit and says, Be silent, come out of him. Be silent, come out of him. For some of us, anxiety is more of a little stress. It gives us sleepless nights. It keeps us worrying about little things. But for others of us, anxiety is a serious mental health condition. For some, what appears to be demon possession in the ancient eyes. For us, what appears to be schizophrenia or psychosis, a mental breakdown. is something that we as a society need to take better thought and care for. We have closed down most of our mental health facilities. We emptied out those places because they were treating people badly. But we didn't replace it with anything. And so now we have no place for people to go. We have trouble in some places even finding a therapist to talk to. If Jesus thought that we needed to do something about mental illness. How can we not do anything? Jesus invites us to take on that justice issue that everyone deserves the medicine that will keep their mind safe, that will cease the anxiety that puts them in dangerous places, that leads them to dangerous thoughts. Everyone deserves the support they need to thrive and survive. Jesus speaks to the unclean spirits and says, be quiet, be silent, hush, come out of him. And while we know that that's not a solution in our day and time, while that is not a total fix, in the world of the gospel, Jesus had that ability to command spirits. He could command them to be silent, to hush, so they don't speak their obsessive thoughts. But maybe what we can learn to do, what we can learn to do with our anxiety, our fears, and our worries is to learn how to hush them, how to quiet them, how to let them go, to release their, to let them be released so that their power and hold does not control us. For some of this, this can be done by learning how to meditate and be silent, learning how to still our minds and rest in the peace and quiet of God. One of the practices that helps me in those moments is a practice I learned through the great and wonderful teacher of Buddhism, Thich Nhat Hanh. Thich Nhat Hanh has a meditation where he invites you to say the word calm on your in-breath and to smile on your out-breath, calm, smile. And while he's telling you that as he's saying calm and smile, he tells you that you know that there are more muscles it takes to frown than there are to make yourself smile. And that that smile changes the whole way you see the world, the whole way you experience what is going on. That smile helps to lighten your mood. And when you practice, when you say calm and then you smile, when you say calm and then you smile, you start to release the anxiety, the worry. You start to be silent and that calmness and that smile can change your thought patterns and help you to move on. The Holy One of God came to church that day. The Holy One of God came to church that day and hushed and quieted the evil within. That anxiety and fear and distress. Now, 
Jesus shows us how to move beyond our anxiety, our fear, and distress. Jesus teaches us to care for those who are struggling with mental health concerns. The Holy One of God is here. What does that have to do with us? As you settle into prayer, I invite you to take a few deep breaths. And I want you to try that meditation practice from Thich Nhat Hanh. I want you on your in-breath to say the word calm and on your out-breath to smile. Calm. 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 Holy One of God, you went into church that day. They asked, what have you have to do with us in church, in the place of holiness? They asked, what have you to do with us? Holy One of God, we want to be a place where you are, where you can be found, where you can be experienced, where you can be recognized, where you enter. Holy One of God, you spoke to those in church that day. Speak to us. Calm our fears, anxieties, and worries. Help us to find that quiet center. Help us to let go of all that keeps us from you. Help us to expel the evil in our midst. Whatever form that evil takes, from unkindness to systemic racism, from neglect to abuse, from addiction to overindulgence, Holy One, you know the evil in our midst. And quiet it. Tell it to come out. Holy One of God, we have so many people we ask prayers for. Our country and elected leaders. Family and friends who are sick. Our family members who are hospitalized. Our family who is waiting the new birth but anxious because it's way too soon. Holy One, we ask your prayers for those in our world who have COVID-19. There are so many here in the United States, so many lost, so many dying, so many who will have this horrible disease and its consequences for years and years to come. And Holy One, we ask you to be with those who are grieving those who have lost someone to death because of COVID and those who have just lost someone because of cancer and old age, because of all the ways in which loss enters our life. Be with those who are grieving. Bring them your peace. And Holy One, we pray for those who have been left behind in this society, who don't have enough to eat, who are struggling to pay the bills, who are afraid of being kicked out of their homes, their apartments, who are worried that the job they have will disappear in an instant, who have no job and have no idea where to find the next job. Holy One, speak to them. Jesus, Holy One of God, your words of prayer we turn to now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if nobody told you today, remember. Remember that God loves you and always will. Jesus, the Holy One of God, loves you and always will. I love you and always will. May you be fed by the Holy. May you have time this week to be silent and still in the presence of the Holy. May you hear the Holy Voice come and calm and silent that anxiety and worry within you. And may you be the presence of the holy to someone else. Amen. <laughs>